I've been an educator for several decades. Uh, I worked as an instructor in the Canadian Armed Forces. I developed various forms of training and education. Uh, I've been a high school teacher. Uh, I've been teaching um, pre-service teachers and uh, serving teachers in educational technology. And for the last 15 years or so, I've been an instructional designer and an educational technologist. And my current role, I'm an instructional designer here at Royal Roads University. And I've been teaching with WordPress for about eight or nine years. Uh, so I think this is a really, uh, it's really great that I um, connected with this organization and I think it's a great opportunity to be presenting here. Um, I'm active with a group in British Columbia called the Educational Technology Users Group and that's how I initially found out about WP Campus existing. And so I live in Victoria, British Columbia with my wife. So I'll start off by just acknowledging that here at Royal Roads University, uh, we work and play on the traditional land of Malt and Songhees First Nations who've been here for time immemorial and who share these resources with the Beecher Bay and Souk Nations. So it's important here at Royal Roads that we acknowledge the traditions of the place that we're gathering in. We'll start off with some context. So Royal Public University. It's located at Hatley Park National Historic Site, which is to say it's on the site of a very old coal baron's mansion and grounds, which then later served as a military college. And it's here on the southern tip of uh, Vancouver Island, uh, just outside of the city of Victoria. And Royal Roads University predominantly serves uh, graduate programs for mid-career professionals and most of the programs are online and, or blended. And one other thing you might notice is uh, we do a lot of movie filming here at Royal Roads as well. So here's a picture. Um, we've had X-Men here, uh, Deadpool stopped by to visit uh, earlier this year. So at Royal Roads University, um, learning is happening mostly online and it's supported by an organization called the Center for Teaching and Educational Technologies. And that organization where I work provides instructional design, educational technology research, faculty development, course site development, online and drop-in faculty and staff support, and media support. At Royal Roads University, we have a number of faculties and within each faculty, several schools. The program I want to talk about and share with you today is one that developed within the School of Education and Technology. Um, the School of Education and Technology so serves um, uh, mostly uh, working educators, uh, either in the K-12 system, post-secondary, or in the private sector. And they offer graduate programs around um, uh, leadership, um, integration of technology. And the program I'm wanting to talk about specifically is a Master of Arts in Learning and Technology. So the Master of Arts in Learning and Technology at Royal Roads University recently went through a five-year review and all of the programs at Royal Roads and, and most universities in British Columbia go through a review every five years. And a redesign was uh, decided upon uh, using several principles to guide the redesign, but two key ones were openness and the use of OER. And using the contribution to uh, digital learning networks and communities on the part of students. Coinciding with this redesign was an opportunity that presented itself because Royal Roads University was also at the same time starting a WordPress project. And I'm gonna try and slip back a few slides because I'm seeing that I have missed over a few here. So obviously the setup in the slide that I missed before this was that the Mallet project decided to the Mallet program decided that their new version of this uh, program would be offered uh, using an open orientation. And that one key aspect of that was that they were going to move out of the learning management system and into a more open platform which would support 
uh, open pedagogy and, and an open way of, of um, engaging the students in the in their graduate program so having a WordPress project starting at Royal Roads at the same time that the uh, program redesign occurred meant that uh, they were able to piggyback onto this project so having decided to move into open there were a number of challenges in that kind of orientation so one of the first ones was developing a common understanding of what open meant uh, the core faculty in the program uh, had a significant amount of experience in open learning and open pedagogy but uh, it was a bit more of a stretch to find more associate faculty and bring the associate faculty that were involved in the program along to be comfortable in a certain um, definition of what open learning was going to mean in the in the in the way that this program was delivered the next uh, challenge is also that they had to negotiate open with the students in the program so with each cohort that came in uh, this idea of openness was something that students had to buy into and the degree to which they were themselves willing to be open would vary from the beginning of the program to later on in the program and so this was something that we had to build into the solutions for the platform we were developing for them there were some technical sides as well to uh, challenges to this adoption so one was avoiding uh, taking on too many plugins and themes with the WordPress installations that we decided to eventually use, uh, supporting students and faculty in using WordPress, and developing a model for provisioning rolling over courses that were using WordPress um, in an open way that was sustainable for the support staff at Royal Roads to be able to support this program. Lastly, uh, the open idea of a graduate program in learning and technology also was challenging as far as complying with Royal Roads University policies and more specifically the British Columbia Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. So there were some very um, let's say redlined borders that we had to respect as we set up infrastructure to support this uh, new way of delivering the program. So by the sheer luck of uh, coincidence we were able to add the redesign of the Mallet uh, Master of Arts in Learning and Technology program to the uh, just then emerging project uh, of having a, a WordPress installation or installations at Royal Roads University. The advantage to this was that we were able to take advantage of project management services. So a project manager who was already working with the larger WordPress project was able to undertake the milestones and workload to guide us through uh, this um, uh, more of a learning design project of using WordPress for the graduate program. We had the allocation of instructional design work and senior learning technologist support. We had support from information technologies. We were able to uh, manage identification for this project. So it wasn't just a standalone WordPress in a corner. Um, it worked through our ID management system. And we were able to get a private privacy impact assessment done. So within this project, we were able to establish a fairly ambitious set of deliverables that we created before the court, before the program went live in its new uh, version. First of all, we had separate WordPress installations developed, one for the course sites and another one that would host all of the student blog sites. The sites were hosted in uh, with a, a, a company called WP Cloud, which is a Canadian based a web services company, a division of a Canadian based web services company and it was served from um, servers within Canada which helped with uh, the FOI PPA requirements and using Shibboleth we were able to have the uh, WordPress sites authenticate using our system back here at Royal Roads University. There were lots of um, important deliverables around the design and support delivery support for this 
Typically at Royal Roads University, every new course gets instructional design and technical support. These uh, new courses being designed in an entirely new environment uh, required significantly more support, both instructional design uh, oriented and on the technical side. And we were able to provide these for the initial rollout for every course in the program. So uh, unique Moodle and WordPress templates were developed for these courses. So there was still a, a Moodle back end to each course um, for certain purposes that I'll, I'll get into later. And course designers and instructors for this uh, newly revised program also received personalized support for using WordPress. We had a range of uh, course designers and instructors who had um, you know, from having never used WordPress before or any kind of tool like that, to some who had, you know, a very long standing experience with WordPress, but with their own WordPress installation. And so we're used to having certain tools at their fingertips. Um, and this being an institution installation, we had to decide what were the plugins and tools that we were going to provide. And we couldn't really get into the business of adding plugins every time. Uh, an instructor or a course designer thought of something that would be nice to to have uh, just for that one site. So student support was also key here. The students at Royal Roads University are used to using Moodle as the, the current learning management system. And we have support for students in using Moodle you know, at present. But WordPress was going to be a bit more of a step out of the unknown for them and as well the nature of this redesigned Mallet program was that students were going to be producing content, making things on their own sites and sharing them with others and in to have discussions and going to other places to have discussions. They were going to be much more involved with the WordPress site than they're ever going to be with a Moodle site. So we had uh, tutorials created in house. We curated of external tutorials and resources. Um, we had some specific tutorials set up for just the students in Mallet who were using their WordPress installations. And we also had live WordPress sessions uh, via web conference for the online cohorts and, uh, and in a computer lab for a, a blended cohort. Some of the components uh, was, first of all, each course had a Moodle site. And there were some requirements that we have here at Royal Roads University where we had to have a Moodle site for each course. Uh, one was that the registrar's office required uh, a certificate where they consider the record of the course existing because Royal Roads does the bulk of its uh, teaching learning online. Uh, that's the, the way the system has evolved here. So things like uh, the course outline, a readings list, were going to be required to be within the Moodle site. Additionally, the Moodle sites would have things like web conferencing links. So we use Blackboard Collaborate uh, with a plug-in right into Moodle. That makes it very simple to pop into uh, Collaborate sessions. So those were still on the Moodle, on the Moodle site. Additionally, um, assignment drop boxes. Though most assignments in most courses uh, required the students to create something that would actually just be sitting out on their WordPress blog. Um, we did have uh, assignment drop boxes created for situations where there would be an actual thing to provide more detailed private feedback to students uh, by using the Dropbox on the Moodle site. Then we also had a course WordPress site for each course. And that was where the bulk of the learning took place you know, between the course site and, and the student site. So the course WordPress site included the course content, the activities, assignment, description, uh, assignment descriptions, and open discussion. One thing that was also kept to Moodle in some courses was a forum for more discrete discussion. So in a few cases, we had learning activities where students would be uh, discussing uh, perhaps uh, context at their place of work, you know, where they're teaching, uh, things that they, you know, didn't really want to discuss out in the open. And so we kept that back in uh, the Moodle site. So then we have a student WordPress site. 
And so each student gets uh, their own WordPress site with a, a limited number of plugins and a, and a collection of themes to choose from. Uh, there, we have student-generated content, which is a key component to this redesigned Mallet program. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, learning within a learning management system, uh, you can't really say that students generate content. They uh, participate in activities and discussions, etc. cetera. Um, but there isn't a place in most learning management systems for students to hang out things that they've created. So student-generated content was you know, a driving reason to start using WordPress. Uh, students participate in activities. They do local discussions. So something that will happen in a program designed around WordPress is that many students will be working on a certain activity at the same time, and they will go and visit each other's blogs and see what's happening. And a discussion will start based around one post by one student that seems to have hit on a really interesting aspect of a problem. And so you'll have this discussion happening, and it's happening on one particular student's WordPress site, you know, not back at the learning management system. So the student WordPress sites also house projects that they're undertaking. Uh, they can include items that were for assignment completion and opportunities for reflection. So a key component for this program using um, student WordPress sites, uh, course WordPress sites, and Moodle was a feed reader to allow uh, both the instructors and students to manage um, their uh, consumption of blog posts, of comments uh, that are happening in the course. So the feed reader, and we recommended Feedly uh, for the students so they could uh, adopt whichever one they wanted, uh, was used for the curation of course blog feeds, management of unread feeds, um, identification of current blog-based discussions. So if you imagine there's 30 students in a course, um, and maybe there's a really interesting discussion going on about an activity, um, but you aren't going to pop in on a Tuesday afternoon and link to 30 different blogs to see if there's some discussion happening. But if you happen to have Feedly with the uh, RSS feeds for all of the discussion, for all the comments in the student blogs um, uh, mapped in, then you can see by a, a little number in your feed reader that there's a dozen unread comments over on Steve's blog there. So maybe that's worth a visit. So the last thing I'll do before I, I close up here and, and see if anybody has any questions is I'll map out what the learning environment for this redesigned open Master of Arts and Learning and Technology looked like. And so this is a it's kind of a technical mapping of how the site worked. I also made a video version of this uh, for the students to look understand um, the structure of the learning environment they're working in. I kind of concerned that it was a little too scary, um, a little too involved, but nobody dropped it just after having seen it. So first off, every course site has a Moodle site and it's connected to a WordPress site. And what happens is on the Moodle site, there will be an instructor posts forum. And posts from the instructor in that will also be um, displayed on the course WordPress site in a little widget on the side. And those posts will also be republished as blog posts on the course WordPress site. And so we used um, Feed WordPress as a system for republishing posts in that manner. Okay, so the next step out from there is that every student has their own WordPress site. And instructor posts go out to a widget on each student WordPress site via RSS so that uh, the student goes into their own blog site is the first place they go to in a day and they can see if there are new posts from the instructor there. Next, uh, you have a collection of all of the student feeds from uh, their WordPress. And uh, students, when they post, will use a category specific to the course that they want this post to be related to so that we can generate RSS feeds 
that are just for a specific course. For example, say LRNT 521 uh, will have its own category and we can collect feeds of student posts that are just related to that course. And by using um, an OPML file, which is essentially uh, a file that collects many RSS feeds together, uh, we can then easily take all of those posts and insert them into Feedly. And we create the OPML files uh, for each course as they come along in the program and put links for them onto the course uh, WordPress site. So everybody can grab that OPML file and put it into Feedly and have uh, very quickly all of the student posts uh, mapped in for their particular course and with another OPML file, all of the comments from all of the student uh, blogs. And so the last thing that happens here with this OPML file is that student posts that are relevant to a particular course are then republished back on the course site uh, with a category of uh, student posts. And so if you go to the blog menu item for uh, on a course website, you can view instructor posts or you can view student posts. So a constant stream of student posts that are relevant to that particular course will be displayed on the course site. The course site uh, sits in its natural front page as being static, uh, displaying links to all of the um, content for the course, et cetera. But that's in a nutshell how this uh, learning environment is designed and how it integrates content uh, from the course or, or from instructors out to the student sites, how student work gets aggregated and brought back into the WordPress course site and how we've tried very hard to make it as reasonably easy as possible to keep track of what everybody is getting up to uh, during a course. So at this point, uh, I'd like to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, so uh, while using Feedly as an aggregator is relatively straightforward, did you consider building a planet site for aggregating class content? Um, well, I haven't seen, uh, so there's a link there to indieweb.org slash planet, and I'm going to write that down. Um, no, we didn't, I mean, specifically we didn't, I didn't know of this uh, particular um, idea there. The, the aggregation of all the student posts into the course website um, was about as much as we wanted to go as far as bringing student site content in. So by planet site, do you mean the aggregation of student content or a place to collect all kinds of content contributed by uh, the instructor, et cetera? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to find if people have built tools to do this sort of thing. Um, one thing I'll say is that using feed WordPress and OPML and, and RSS feeds, I mean, you can use feed WordPress to bring in single RSS feeds and republish them or OPML files to republish whole bags of them. There is a, a fair amount of setup and configuration that you want to do to make things happen just the way you want. So um, I went by it really quickly in the slides but you should plan on a little extra time to make sure it's happening right. And a little extra time course site. I find that uh, this is a finicky area that um, will take a, a few minutes of your time.